Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, the researchers, journal editors, publishers, librarians, service providers, aggregators, information professional, and yes, dear colleagues. It is uh, my great privilege and honor to welcome you all on this year, PubMed 2020, uh, online edition of the, our conference on uh, scholarly communication in the context of open science. First, I will give the floor to our co-chair co of the PubMed 2020 conference and also uh, president of the um, newly formed and established uh, Croatian Association for Scholarly Communication, Vladimir Mersha, to uh, welcome all of you. Uh, thank you, Yadranka. Uh, uh, sorry, you're probably not able to see me, uh, which is not a great loss because some technical issues just occurred a couple of minutes ago. Uh, anyway, I would like to, to uh, welcome you all on behalf of, the, of our association, the Croatian Association uh, for Scientific Communication. Uh, it is a very young association. Uh, uh, we started our activities all, um, only this year, and uh, it's a great uh, honor for us to uh, co uh, participate in the, uh, the organization of this meeting already in the first year of our existence. Uh, the, when we... Uh, uh, Thought of organizing this this uh, uh, this association, we of course started to uh, to think about who we want to uh, to associate and uh, who are the, our potential members. And uh, uh, we immediately realized that actually everybody in science is in, uh, in, in uh, is interesting in, in the scientific communication because it's it's a part of our job. It's a part of our uh, of our uh, everyday, it's part of everyday science. It's one of our major tools. Uh, so uh, I'm really happy that uh, so many participants uh, uh, are going to join us uh, today and tomorrow uh, for this meeting. And already the, the pre-conference day yesterday was, was very successful. I, uh, I think that the, there was a lot of interest. And uh, I really hope to, to, uh, to be able to say that uh, uh, we'll all see live uh, uh, perhaps next year on, uh, on the next PubMed. Uh, thank you very much. I wish you all an um, interesting time uh, in front of your computers. And uh, uh, I, I hope the, uh, your uh, expectations will be fulfilled by this meeting. Thank you. Yadranka, yeah, unmute yourself, please. Uh, now I would like to ask uh, our dear colleague, Mariana Tomic from the Department of Information Sciences at University of Zadar to welcome you. Thank you. Thank you, Yadranka. Uh, it's really my great honor and privilege to greet you all on behalf of the Department of Information Sciences and University of Zadar. Uh, we are really very proud to be one of the hosts of this uh, really important conference, uh, which is for the seventh time uh, setting the framework and creates preconditions for open, uh, transparent uh, scientific communication, which is one of the most important issues and preconditions of nowadays science. Um, here in Zadar, we are really very proud uh, to be one of the universities which adopted the recently open science policy and which encourages and supports open access journals. Still, uh, we have to overcome, overcome a range of barriers uh, uh, to reach the full openness and uh, this is why we are very grateful for this conference because we learned a lot from the previous ones and uh, uh, which uh, those conferences really set it the stage and encouraged the adoption of open science policy, uh, policy at our university. So again, we expect a lot uh, from this year's uh, conference. Uh, unfortunately, uh, from COVID situation, we learned uh, some uh, more things uh, than just about epidemic, epidemic but uh, we also learned uh, how important it is to have immediate 
open access to relevant and scientific information. We depend on it. Uh, actually, at this moment, literally, our lives depend on it. So it is always the right time to talk about open science and open access. But I dare to say that it is now maybe more than ever. This is why I really warmly welcome uh, this significant conference and I would like to really express uh, my warm gratitude to all you, all the engaged organizers uh, and committees of this conference uh, whose passion, uh, I, I think that in the first place passion uh, to science, uh, to scientific communication, to the openness of ideas and transparency and the availability of scientific thought uh, led to this significant event. It is not easy to organize such a conference, especially in this epidemic crisis, and I know how many hours of hard work is behind all of you, and I must express again my gratitude to all of you, especially I thank to invited speakers, all the other speakers, workshop leaders, moderators, and all the others. Uh, although I really regret that we are not able to welcome you here in the beautiful town of Zadar, and I'm looking forward for some future occasions uh, to meet you here. You know that it is the town with the most beautiful sunset, the most, be most beautiful food and wine and uh, really lovely people. So I would like uh, to uh, wish you the successful conference, but also to wish you that we meet next year here in Zadar. Um, I'm sure that this conference will, as always, improve uh, scientific writings, scientific journals. We learned a lot even yesterday, and uh, I congratulate on the yesterday's day, which was very useful to all of us. I know that you will generate uh, new ideas, uh, new activities, um, and that you will find the means to overcome the barriers in promoting the idea of open science and connect, to connect the most prominent and enthusiastic scientific um, uh, people and sharing the idea of openness and transparency in science. So once, ag once again, sorry, thank you all and greetings from Zadar which is uh, very sunny today and regretting not to have you here. So have a successful conference and greetings from all of us. Thank you, Mariana. So once more, uh, please allow me on behalf of the organizing and program, program committee to extend our all, all warm welcome and cordial greetings to all of you from Croatia and other countries <coughs> to attend uh, this year PAME 2020 conference on scholarly communication in the context of open science. Uh, I would like to share my screen because I have a few slides. As Mariana mentioned, it's pity that we couldn't meet uh, in Zadar like previous years, but hopefully the University of Zadar will be hosting us physically next year. Uh, with all uh, disadvantages uh, not be physically present in Zadar, uh, this online edition offered uh, us some new possibilities. So we took the opportunity and changed completely the concept of PubMed and invited our colleagues from different cities and different countries to join us with their sessions on scholarly communication topics. So this year we have 13 sessions from 10 different cities, Sarajevo, Skopje, Novi Sad, Ljubljana, Brussels, Paris, Split, Osijek, Zada and Zagreb. PubMed 2020 has uh, uh, more than 500 registered participants from more than 50 countries. And I hope that from time to time, they all be uh, uh, taking part in some of the sessions. 
This year's PubMed 2020 is a result of collaboration and uh, joint efforts between Department of Information Sciences at University of Zadar, Creation Association of Information uh, of Scholarly Communication, Faculty of Food Technology and Biotechnology at University of Zagreb, and Center for Scientific Information at Ruja Boskovic Institute in Zagreb. In that regards, I also wish to thank our rector Diana Witzan and all the colleagues from the University of Zadar for their continuous support to PubMed Conference. And uh, working closely with the colleagues from the University of Zadar, uh, CROASC Association, University of Zagreb, and Roger Borkridge Institute over a few, uh, last years in the organization of uh, uh, PubMed Conference, I, I could say that we have gained a really valuable experience. We have learned a lot from each other and we enjoy in the process and uh, deepened our friendship. Also, I would like to thank you. I would like to thank our program committee. Uh, our program committee who uh, participated in the creation of this program and also uh, participated in providing peer review for our short talk session. Uh, I want to welcome all the speakers and panelists who will be presenting and sharing their thoughts and ideas during these two days of the conference. And I'm especially grateful to our keynote speakers who agreed to share with us their enormous knowledge and their vision in open science. PubMed 2020 is held under the auspices of the Ministry of Science and Education of Republic of Croatia, Open Air, Advance, Spark Europe, and European Association of Science Editors is, and realized with the great help from our sponsors. And uh, sponsors are actually the reason uh, that uh, um, this year we don't have conference fee and that fact we uh, should, uh, sorry. Our sponsors this year, our gold sponsor is Elsevier, silver sponsor, sponsor is Clarivate Analytics, bronze sponsor is Crossref, our Crossref, Springer Nature, Copernicus Publication, EBSCO, and uh, American Chemical Society publication. And I just forgot to uh, express uh, and we have uh, warm regards and a steering committee of the Open Science MOOC, which was uh, uh, the main funder was John Tennant, uh, to whom we will devote our next uh, short session as a part of this opening. Uh, so we have uh, 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 their warm welcome and their warm regards. And uh, also they are inviting everyone interesting in uh, open science and in open science activities, especially how to include open science in the learning processes to join Open Science MOOC. And uh, I just forgot to, to uh, thank express my uh, thanks to our technical support, Alan Vodopievets, Karla Hrenovic, Matija Kovacev, the Boskovic Institute, also our dear colleague Dali Bariakos, from who is uh, uh, very active on social networks and also responsible for for um, yes our public representation and uh, Matija Marahnic for uh, taking care about our website.
just for the end, this year Parliament 2020 program consists of four keynote speakers, 30 sessions, 13 sessions, uh, two panel sessions, one short talk session, uh, presenting peer-reviewed papers and four workshops. Sessions are organized. Sessions are organized by our colleagues from different institution and organization who are active in the promotion of open science. And I would like to express big thanks to them. During our program next two days, we will have a lot of breaks, so you can have a coffee or tea or have some food or just stretch yourself. Please do not forget to join us after the break. Because uh, uh, of some Zoom limitations, we were forced to split our program into 15 Zoom webinars with different links. So every morning you will get an email with the links to different sessions, webinars. If you cannot find an email, please check your spam or just don't hesitate to contact us. Finally, our organizing and program committee members will do their best to answer your possible questions and to make your virtual presence at PubMed 2020 comfortable and beneficial for you as possible. I really hope that you will enjoy the conference, that you will ask a lot of questions, comment and spread the world, uh, word about PubMed 2020 across your networks. If you are active on social networks, you can use our hashtags, PubMed 2020, of course, and very significant uh, second hashtag, see you in Zadar, which means that next year we will be in Zadar. Thank you all for participating. And now uh, we will just uh, have the next 15 minutes to remember our dear, co dear colleague, uh, Jonathan Tennant. First, we will uh, watch the short five minute video, which was recorded by John's sister, Rebecca, and she will tell us more about John. Then I will uh, tell you some of my memories and uh, yes. Hi everybody, I'm Rebecca Tennant and I'm Jonathan Tennant's sister and I was just asked to talk for a few minutes about Jonathan so I'm just going to do that. Um, so you probably all know Jonathan as an academic who spoke about open science and um, scholarly communications and I know him a little bit as that but primarily obviously as my brother, as somebody I grew up with, spent my childhood with, went on um, summer holidays with, spent Christmases with and I knew him from someone as someone who from a very young age was very driven, very intelligent, very insightful and very curious and um, as someone who had a huge thirst for knowledge and I think those things prompted him or um, you know fueled him through his academic career through getting his degree his master's his PhD um, and you know he had such a strong passion to to make things better to get more knowledge not just for the sake of knowledge um, but instead to yeah, to make things better, to make science better, to make studying better, to make the way we view the world better. Um, and I really admired that about him. He was also one of the kindest um, and most sensitive people I've ever met. He, um, he really was so kind and he had such a, a large capacity, I think larger than nearly anyone else I've ever met, to, um, to love people. And I think he showed that through just making endless time for people. Like something I really clearly remember about Jonathan is no matter how busy he was um, or how successful he became, he, he never didn't have time to talk at length and depth to people he barely knew. And I've had so many messages from people who say, um, 
Yeah, you know, I, I really, I knew your brother, we were really close, we spoke every day. And it got to a point where I thought, how did you have the time to be speaking to all these people every day? But I know he did. Um, you know, he had those continuing conversations with people and he really believed in people. It wasn't about him. He put energy into encouraging people to, to be the best they could. Um, and Jonathan really did believe that we could all create positive change in science or, you know, whatever field. Um, and I love the fact he encouraged other people to take the lead on this change. It wasn't about him and he wasn't a glory seeker, but he encouraged people to step out and to, you know, to speak out, to be bold, to believe in making those changes and to believe that they were the agent that could do so. So I really, really like that. Um, another thing I remember about Jonathan um, is his extremely dry... British sense of humour. Um, it very, very frequently made me laugh and probably nearly as frequently made me cringe. Um, but Jonathan definitely had an extremely strong sense of humour and um, yeah, that, I'll, I'll miss that. I'll miss the strange WhatsApp messages I received at two in the morning. Um, so another thing I admire about Jonathan is, you know, he was obviously gifted, he was intelligent, he was talented. And I like the fact he chose to use those things, as I said before, for good. Um, he, uh, you know, relentlessly encouraged people. He relentlessly spoke out boldly against organisations whose malpractice he didn't believe in or whose scientific practices he didn't believe were beneficial for the overall community. He spoke out against, you know, closed science or, or bad journalistic practices or, you know, whatever. Um, he obviously in the last few months of his life, took a very bold stance against OpenCon and Spark and their behaviour, uh, their lack of transparency, um, their lack of ethical decisions, their lack of just behaviour, their lack of truth. Um, and it's brave to do that. It is brave. I think a lot of us are wronged in our careers or our lives and we kind of just, you know, pass it off. Um, but Jonathan didn't. And, it, and I do, you know, I do agree that and I support that. Um, and I think if you could take anything from Jonathan's life, it would be... Um, he wrote something <clears throat> quite recently before he died about using adversity in challenging times to actually better ourselves and to learn from it and to still be good and kind and patient in those times. So I would say, you know, learn that um, or apply that. Um, but also, you know, in your sector especially, take responsibility for your decisions and choices and pick very carefully the organisations that you're going to support. Don't just look for organisations that have a nice website or um, do good things but you know they need to also be able to behave well in bad times they need to have policies and procedures and standards in place that are not just good when it's easy but also support you um, if something goes wrong OpenCon and Spark didn't do that for Jonathan you know when things went bad they um they weren't they weren't there um, I think their behavior was was awful and I hope yeah, we can learn the importance from that of having good code of conducts in place and good strategies and, um, you know, just good ethics behind, behind our decisions and our policy making. Sorry. It was a sunny September day when John arrived for the first time at Zadar Airport, smiling, returning from Bali to participate as an invited lecturer at our PubMed 2018 conference on open science. Just a second. Sorry.
Hearty and direct as he was, he navigated me skillfully as I drove the borrowed cart from Nicolina, my colleague, from the airport to downtown Zadar, talking about he, the weeks he spent in Bali. Thus began our too short but deep friendship. John stayed in Zadar for four days, during which we hang out a lot, discussing various topics related uh, to and unrelated to our work. Uncompromised and passionate in his work, John has been one of the best advocates of open science. His interests were numerous and he lived them at to the fullest. John completed his PhD in paleontology at Imperial College London, where he was awarded the Janet Watson Award for Research Excellence. He studied the evolution of dinosaurs, crocodiles, and other animals, systematically fostering changes in scholarly communication. So he founded the open publishing platform Paleoarchive. He was communica communication director at Science Open for two years. He actively participated as an editor in PLOS Paleo Community, Geoscience Communication, Journal of Evidence-Based Healthcare, and other journals. He led the campaign against the privatization of knowledge at Education, of Education International, led the creation of the Open Science Strategy, was an ambassador of ASAP Bio and the Center for Open Science, advisor at Fixture, Guana Science Matters, mentor within Mozilla Open Leaders, and co-host of the Berlin Open Science Meetup. He was a member of the Global Young Academy and independent researcher at the Institute of Globally Distributed Open Research and Education. John is also author of dozens of papers still available at uh, his work ID profile. He also published children's book on dinosaurs. He was a very active writer on Facebook and Twitter and blogger at Open Scholarship, Green Tea and Velo Velociraptors. In his talks, John often pointed out as the core of the problem, big publishers and impossibility of significant changes in the environment in which their profits dictate development of scholarly communication. Although always choosing his words, he clearly uh, stated the views that many shared, but did not maybe dare to say. He founded and built the Open Science MOOC massive online open community with great enthusiasm, promoting the values of open science, bringing together the open science community and teaching new generations of researchers how to practice open science. I will remember John as a warm and cheerful person, always in the mood for joke, even when it came for severe topics. What set him apart from others was the absence of ego and his self selflessness and willingness, willingness to share his contributions with the community, as well as the courage to be on his own. John's last few months were marked by uh, media persecution on Twitter, after which he mostly retired working on himself and his personal development. My last collaboration with John was related to the paper A Tale of Two Opens, which discussed the similarities and differences between open source and open science communities. With John's departure, the open science community lost its most ardent, selfless, and courageous advocate. 
I have lost a dear friend whose memory I will keep forever. Somewhere deep inside. Yes. With this, I would like to uh, yes pronounce our PubMed 2020 conference open and uh, I let the floor uh, to my colleague uh, to run the next session. <laughs>